Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Eleanor Hawkins, and welcome to Tell a Story Time. Oh, spring is here, and we're going to have some spring stories later in the show. But first, let me read you. The Library, A Magic Castle. Come to the Magic Castle when you are growing tall. Rows upon rows of word windows line every single wall. They reach up high, as high as the sky, and you want to open them all. For every time you open one, a new adventure has begun. The library, a magic castle. And now, boys and girls, our very first story this morning is the one that is entitled, Wind Blow Wind. Once there was a little girl who just couldn't sit still. Her name was Wendy. Sit still, Wendy, and read it. Read your book, said Daddy. Sit still, Wendy, while I tie you, your shoelace, said Sister. But Mother only laughed, why Wendy could no more sit still than the wind could sit still, she said. That's how little girls are, you see, all wiggles and twists. Now one day, Wendy was playing alone in the yard when all, the wind blew her hat off. That's how the wind is, you see, all breezes and bluster. Wendy's hair blew in her eyes. The weather vane on top of the garage spun around like a top, and all the spring flowers bowed low to the little girl as she ran to catch her cap. Why can't you sit still, Mr. Wind? Wendy cried. Sit still indeed, huffed a voice in her ear. I must whisper and whistle and a whirl of hay, for I can't sit still in any way. I must sail all the sailboats in the sea. I must twirl the kites high as can be. I must blow each leaf from every tree, for I never, never sit still, you see. Well, yes, I do, Wendy said, holding on to her hat. You're too busy to sit still. But don't you ever have any fun? And then the wind laughed in her ear and started to sing again. Whisper and whistle and a whirl of hay. I have my fun most every day. While I push that cow right over the moon, the time the dish ran away with the spoon, because I was whistling a merry tune, a tune about cats and fiddles and June. Perhaps you could play with me, Wendy said hopefully. Oh, I'd love to, sighed the wind, bending the grasses. Wait just a minute while I dry your mother's laundry. The socks and the shirts, the sheets and the petticoats, and Wendy's pale pink party dress all jiggled on the clothesline as the wind blew a breeze through each one. Whoops, puffed the wind, I almost forgot that pie of your mother's on the windowsill and he whistled over and blew a cool breeze across the apple pie. Now, he said, curling through Wendy's hair, shall we go? Oh, yes, cried Wendy, and the wind pushed her gently toward town. What shall we do first? Oh, that's easy, sang the wind. Let's blow these papers roundabout so folks will think without a doubt that in the midst of March it's snowing, when we know that it's just me blowing. And Wendy ran along as the wind huffed and puffed through the white papers, which flew around and around in circles. Everyone in town looked up at the, at the sky to see the March wind blowing. Down at the corner, Wendy felt a drop of rain on the end of her nose. Oh, it's just a March house, said the wind. It will be over in a minute. Then he did a naughty thing. He blew everyone's umbrella inside out with one puff. Now, Mr. Wind, you must sit still, Wendy cried, and she turned to run home as fast as she could. But suddenly, something happened. The shower stopped, just as Mr. Wind said it would. The sun came out and each flower was standing straight and tall with a clean face, but everything was very, very still. The weather vane stood silently on top of the garage. 
The clothes on the clothesline hung straight down without a wrinkle. Mr. Wynn, cried Wendy, where are you? Oh, I'm sorry I scolded you. Then a small airy whisper in Wendy's ear said, as long as I move, you know I'm here. But when I stop, I disappear. Oh, I think I understand, Wendy said slowly. But, but will you play with me again? Oh, of course, promised the wind. Whenever you sail your boat or fly your kite or blow out your birthday candles, I'll be playing with you. He blew down the street in a hurry. The weather vane turned happily once again. The flowers nodded and smiled as he passed, and a bright red balloon bobbed high up in the sky. That's the way the wind is, you see, all breezes and bluster. And that, boys and girls, is the story. Blow, wind, blow. And now stay tuned, and I'll be back in just a moment to read from our big Do You Know book. Stay tuned. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read from our big Do You Know book. Do you know all about spring? Do you know the first day of spring is March the 20th? Do you know on the first day of spring that the night is as long as the day, exactly 12 hours each? Do you know in spring, the flow of sap begins again in the veins of tree trunks and branches bring about the bursting leaf and flower buds? Do you know spring is a season when our songbirds return telling us spring is here? Do you know spring is when the shad begin their migration up our coastal rivers to their homes where they will spawn and many local fishermen enjoy catching and eating the fish? Do you know Randolph Caldecott, the famous English illustrator of children's books, was born on March the 22nd, 1846. Do you know the Caldecott Medal Award is given every year since 1938 in his honor to the most distinguished children's picture book illustrator? Do you know some of these award winners are Many Moons, when the, Where the Wild Things Are, and also the Polar Express? Be sure and visit your public library, any of the libraries in the Craven, Pamlico, Carver Regional Library System, and check out some very books about spring on your very own library card. And now stay tuned and we'll another, have another story all about spring. Stay tuned.
And now, boys and girls, get very comfortable and ready to listen to the story, Bunny Hopwell's First Spring. Snow was just everywhere. Snowflakes were dancing in the air, blowing into squirrel holes, drifting down rabbit burrows. Bunny Hopwell did not mind the snow. He had been born just before winter started, and he supposed that a snowy world was the only kind of world there was. But one day his mother said that everything would be different when spring came. Spring, well, it was all the squirrels chattered about, all the chipmunks chirped about, all the sparrows twittered about. And down in the rabbit burrow on cold winter evenings, it was all Bunny Hopwell's family talked about. Spring, Bunny Hopwell could listen no longer. He flapped his ears. He stamped his feet. Who is spring, he shouted. The Hopwell rabbits could hardly believe their ears. Who is what, they cried, tumbling over each other. Well, who is spring, Bunny Hopwell asked again. Then all the Hopwell rabbits smiled. Of course, they said. He's too little to know. He's never felt spring. Well, he's never seen spring. Bunny Hopwell saw, Mother Hopwell saw little Bunny Hopwell's ears growing pinker and pinker. Hush, she said to her family, come here, little Bunny Hopwell. And she made room for him on her lap. Spring is beautiful, Mother Hopwell told him. Spring is warm, Mother Hopwell went on. Oh, you'll love spring. After that, Bunny Hopwell thought a lot about spring. The more the snow fell, the more he thought, and the more he wished spring, whoever it was, would hurry up. Now, how would spring come, he wondered. On a sled, like Farmer Green's boy? Or in a station wagon, like Farmer Green? No, said Bunny Hopwell's mother. Spring will come in the air. Spring, said Bunny Hopwell's father, will push up through the ground. Oh, how will I ever wait, Bunny Hopwell sighed. Oh, you must practice your high jumps, said father, because when spring comes, you'll want to jump over the garden fence. Now winter was almost over. Father, Farmer Green's boy put his sled away. Farmer Green got out his rake. The air grew warmer and the days longer. Not long now, squealed the squirrel. Spring's almost here. Oh, spring's just around the corner, sang all the birds. Well, said Bunny Hopwell, I'm not going to wait one minute longer. I'm going out to meet spring. And off he went, straight down the path, past the barn and into the woods. And there in front of Bunny Hopwell, stood a big furry animal, yawning and stretching. Please, said Bunny Hopwell, are you spring? The big furry animal looked away, way down at little Bunny Hopwell. Oh no, he roared, I'm bare. But spring's here, must be. Only reason I got up. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you very much, said Bunny Hopwell. And he ran off down the path. Over by a stream, Bunny Hopwell suddenly saw something very blue growing up out of the ground. He sat down gently and sniffed. Hello, he said quietly. Hello, Spring. Silly laughed a voice above Bunny Hopwell. Now those are violets. Bunny Hopwell looked up. Sitting in a tree was a bird with a fat red breast. When are you, Bunny Hopwell began, but the bird said quickly, well, I'm Robin, who are you? I'm Hopwell, Bunny Hopwell answered. Pleased to meet you, Hopwell, said Robin. Now, how do you like spring? Bunny Hopwell wiggled his ears crossly. That's just the trouble, he said. I can't find spring. Can't find it, exclaimed Robin. 
Why, Hopwell, you're right in the middle of it. What? squeaked Bunny Hopwell, jumping up in the air. The green stuff. No, no, laughed Robin. That's just grass, but good to eat, though. Try some. Bunny Hopwell carefully took one nibble. Hmm, Bunny Hopwell ate and ate. He forgot all about spring. He ate until his sides were bulging. Then he curled up and took a nap. Now when he woke up, the sun was high in the sky. The whole world smelled of violets and fresh grass and the songs of robins were everywhere. Bunny Hopwell was happier and hoppier than he had ever been in all of his life. He didn't know why. He just felt that way. Still wondering about spring, Hopwell, Robin said, dipping down from a tree. Well said, Robin, spring is in everything. You can see it in the warm sun and in the fresh green grass, and you can feel it inside of you. Oh, we all feel it. The violets come in the spring because they feel it. The bear wakes up in the spring because he feels it. And I spread my wings in the spring, and you wiggle your ears in the spring, because we feel spring too. Spring looks good and feels good. Oh, and it smells good too, said Bunny, burying his nose in the grass. Now do you know what spring is, asked Robin. Bunny Hopwell's eyes grew bigger and bigger. Oh, yes, he said breathlessly. Oh, thank you, Robin. Now I'm going home and tell my mother. Lickety-lickety-lick, he ran through the woods, under the gate, past the barn. He slid to a stop in front of his burrow. Mother Hopwell was out sunning herself. Mother, mother, cried Bunny Hopwell, panting for breath. I found spring. And guess what, he said. I know now why spring is called spring. Look, Bunny Hopwell squatted on the ground. Then spring, he jumped clear over the garden fence. And spring, he jumped back again. See, he laughed, springs for springing. All the Hopwell rabbits laughed too because they knew Bunny Hopwell was right. And because it was fun to watch a little rabbit in his first spring. And that, boys and girls, is the story of Bunny Hopwell's first spring. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back with another story in just a minute. And now, boys and girls, get ready to listen to the story, The Bedtime Book. At night when you're sleepy, Mom turns down your bed. But suppose you were some sort of animal instead. If you were an elephant weighing a ton and you were as old as a hundred and one, you would sleep on all furs and you'd feel very fine and quite ready for work the next morning at nine. Now, if you were a turtle, you'd get under your shell, 
then you would huddle and cuddle and sleep very well. If you were a mouse, you would sleep very sound in an attic with funny old things all around. If you were a lamb, you'd have children to pet you. And when it was bedtime, Bo Peep would come get you. Now, if you were a lion, you'd snore loud and clear, and no one would ever come anywhere near. If you were a puppy, you'd sleep warm and snug in a round wicker basket all lined with a rug. If you were a kitten when cold winds were blowing, you'd sleep near the stove with your purr motor going. If you were a horse, it would be quite all right to sleep standing up in your stall through the night. Oh, hay tastes much better to horses than bread, and so the next morning, well, you'd eat up your bed. If you were a bear cub, it would be rather shocking to sleep all through Christmas and not hang up your stocking. If you were a fawn, you'd be careful and quick, and you'd sleep where the forest was shady and thick. If you were a stork full of storybook wonder, you'd sleep on one leg with the other tucked under. If you were a bird, you'd not mind the weather with your head halfway hidden neath mother's best feather. If you were a fox, you'd sleep in a ball with your tail tucked around like a soft, furry shawl. If you were a seal, you would probably sleep with a good many other seals all in a heap. If you were a squirrel, you'd sleep in the dark in a hole in a tree at the edge of the park. But you were a child that's as plain as can be, and you'd never, no, never sleep up in a tree. Why, this must be you in your own little bed with a warm, fluffy blanket pulled up to your head. And that, boys and girls, is a bedtime book, a very cute story about going to sleep with your very favorite toy. And now I want to read you this tiny book that has, I have a little bookmark here. Spring is here. Can you feel it? The wind is blowing, blowing. Hold on tight. Can you hear it? Newborn chicks saying peep, peep, peep. Can you taste it? Strawberry shortcake, cream on the top. Can you see it? Can you smell it? Yellow flowers, red flowers, purple ones, and pink. Spring is here. And that comes from our book, My Book of the Seasons. And now, boys and girls, I'd like to read you this. It's in A Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson, one of our very favorite poets for children. Windy nights, whenever the moon and stars are set, whenever the wind is high, all night long in the dark and wet, a man goes riding by. Late in the night when the fires are out, why does he gallop and gallop about? Whenever the trees are crying aloud, and ships are tossed at sea, by on the highway, low and loud, by at the gallop goes he, by at the gallop he goes and then, by he comes back at the gallop again. And that is Windy Nights by Robert Louis Stevenson from the book, A Child's Garden of Verses. And now, boys and girls, I have time enough to read you this tiny book that I brought along. Read to your bunny. Read to your bunny often. It's 20 minutes of fun. 
it's 20 minutes of moonlight and 20 minutes of sun. 20 favorite minutes there in bedtime. Twenty minutes brand new. Read to your bunny often. And then we turn to this. Your bunny will read to you. Yes, that is the little story entitled Read to Your Bunny. And that reminds me to remind you to read to your parents at night and let them read to you and have a wonderful springtime reading about the beautiful weather we're having. And boys and girls, remember that we have special programs at your public library. Any of the libraries in the Craven, Pamlico, Carteret Regional Library System. And you know they have special programs planned for each of you. Just look at the schedule at your library and remind your parents to mark their calendar so that they can be sure and take you to see the puppet shows and the games they play and the beautiful fairy tales and poems they read to you. So be sure and mark your calendar to be sure and go to your library sometime during this week. And boys and girls, remember, books are so important. You can't do anything without reading, and the more you read, the more you'll know. And now I see it's time for us to close our book of stories for this morning, but we'll be back next Saturday morning. Until then, this is Eleanor Hawkins saying bye-bye for Tell a Story Time.